Hey guys, welcome back to the fifth video in our tutorial series on Azure Service Fabric. In the last video, we talked about stateless multi-node services. And we said in this video, we were going to start looking at stateful services. However, before we start looking at stateful services, we're going to take a quick detour and look at another type of stateless service, which is a stateless API. So we're back in Visual Studio and we can see we still have our new service fabric application with a single service. If you click here, you can see the services. It's called First Stateless Service. And this is the stateless service we created in a previous tutorial video. We're going to add another service to the very same application. And in this case, it's going to be a stateless API service. So to do that, we right click on our service fabric application. We go to add and we go to new service fabric service. We want to select stateless ASP.NET Core, and we won't get into the details of ASP.NET Core in this video. It's a C Sharp framework for creating APIs, and there's plenty of other tutorial videos on the internet and tutorial articles if you want to go into ASP.NET Core in depth. In this video, we'll just do the very basics. So we need to give our service a name, and we'll keep our naming conventions consistent. So we'll just call this first stateless API service. And we'll click create. So we can see once that's created, the service will appear in our services dropdown. So we now have two services in our application. And if we also look in the application manifest XML, we can see that Visual Studio has already added some XML for the first stateless API service. So we can here we have the service manifest importation for our service at version 1.0.0. And we also have a section added to our default services for the first stateless API service. So the service starts up when we run our application. In the first stateless API service itself, we have some things that are familiar and some things that are new. So we still have our program and our startup, which we can leave the same as the template code. They basically just provide some template code to make ASP.NET Core work with service fabric. We have our service event source that we have for logging. And then we have the service itself, as well as a default class that it just creates to do with weather forecast. So we can delete that for now as we want to create a kind of a, a simple application for ourselves. So we'll delete that. And it also has a controller. So a controller is kind of at the core of how ASP.NET Core works. And this is where we define the endpoints for our API. So if we go into weather forecast controller, we'll just go in and we'll just rename this to first controller since we've deleted the reference to the weather forecast. So we'll rename that first controller. That should rename the class as well here. And we can delete most of the template code here. We don't need any constructor. And we'll also delete this method here. So inside the controller, this is where we define what endpoints we want to have on our API. So say if we want a HTTP GET, we just add this decorator for HTTP GET. And then we can add the method that will be called when we call this API endpoint. So in this case, we will have a get method called get. And in our method called get, we'll just simply sleep for one second. And that will be our very simple method there. So you might be wondering what this root decorator here does. So this is just saying that our root will be on slash first. So this expression here means we want the, the name of the controller class, but without the controller part. We can also explicitly define what root we want to use. Say if we just wanted to call it the root first, we could just do first there. And we can also define roots on our individual methods. So if we define a root here, and we call the root get, our endpoint would be on our host, so localhost and the port, slash first, slash get. And if we left this as controller, our endpoint would still be first, slash get, because the name of the controller class itself is first. So let's try run this application now with both services and see what happens. So as usual, right click on the application and just click debug, start new instance. So if we go back to our Service Fabric Explorer, we can see that our application has now successfully deployed. And inside our application, we have two services. So we have the first stateless service and the first stateless API service. So going into this one, we can see that we have a single partition 
on a single node in our five node cluster. The fact that we have a single node is defined in our application manifest. Here we're saying the first stateless API service instance count is minus one. So this means that the API should be deployed on every node. But because we are running on a kind of a pseudo multi-node cluster locally, there's only actually one port to assign for the API. So the API will just run on a single node. If this was running on a multi-node cluster on the cloud, the API will be deployed to every node. For instance, if we were to change this value to three locally, there would be a port conflict because the computer can only have an API running on one port at a time. So that would not be allowed, but that would be allowed on a cloud deployment. Another thing that's important to note when working with APIs in Service Fabric is that the port number the API is running on is defined in the service manifest for the API service. So if we go into the service manifest for first stateless API service and we scroll down, we can see that the API is available on port 8177. We go back to our browser and we go to localhost and 8177 and we remember what the route for our API was. In our first controller, we'll also set a breakpoint here just so we can see if it gets hit. It should be first and then slash get. So let's try that out. So slash first slash get. And as expected, we hit our API endpoint for our API that's running on Service Fabric. So we can continue there. So thanks for watching the video, guys. In this video, you've seen the basics of APIs on Service Fabric using ASP.NET Core. In the next video, we'll start to look more at stateful services and how we can use these in conjunction with APIs and other stateless services. So over the next few videos, we'll look at those topics. Please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more Service Fabric content. Thanks.